Um, you know, and I'd say, you know, likewise, uh, and, and I'd kind of have, based on the conversation, figured out where I can get them down the, down the path, right? Um, and I'd usually choose something like, likewise, you know, um, I want you to be able to spend your money however you want to in your marriage, right? Because you guys are going to uh, have your marriage and you're going to have your own needs. I can't know what that is, right? Because, I mean, I know some of it because we're all people, but I'm, I'm, I'm heterosexual, not homosexual, so I don't know what is involved in a, in a gay relationship. And I don't want to have government telling people, oh, well, in a relationship, you get a tax deduction for X, when I don't know if that applies to you or not. I don't think that's good. I, I think that you should be allowed to decide what you do in your own life and not have somebody that doesn't know you set up weird incentives or disincentives that, that may penalize you. Right. And, and, you know, just kind of leave that seed to try to plant it to, so that they understand that that's where we're coming from is, you know, here's you, this is your belief, here's how it fits into our beliefs and why we believe what you do, and then here's the next step out. And that, that was always the planting the seed method that worked really well. I, I mean, I, I think that we, we helped people at least understand where we come from, even if they don't fully embrace the philosophy. But I think it's trying to you don't want to poison the water. Oh yeah, don't poison I mean, the well. That, that, that's no good. And that, that's always that, that's always the danger is that um, you know that 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 we try to plant seeds and instead of doing that we um, you know we, we we don't you know we end up right. poisoning the and so um, I've seen several great comments along the side. Oh yeah, um, and, and I think because we got some. I, I've been trying to share them as they yeah, come across. Yeah. But they're coming across fast and furious here. We, we've got some new libertarians. Um, got a lot of new libertarians. Yeah, today. welcome I'm to all of you. To see that. Yeah. yeah, well, welcome to all of you. Um, yeah. We love having you here. Um, and uh, you know, and, and and my friend Jared just keeps you know throwing new things out. I'm not even going to respond to him anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love Jared. Jared is a is a native Nebraskan. And um, and he, um, well, we'll have him well, on. Also, also calling for the quiz because it is one yeah. of the most yes. different parts of their show. Right. So I think okay, it is hey, real quick start... before we do it, because Jared asked when I'm going to stop talking, so I'm going to talk just to spite him. That's how I'm wrong. <laughs> um, somebody just earlier asked, uh, they're thinking about joining the party, which you can do by going to lp.org forward slash join. Um, just figured that that's our and duty here to throw that out when somebody right. says I've, I've something about joining. A couple of times, but I'll throw the yep. banner up again just, here. Uh, yeah. Just uh, in case somebody's listening and not watching, because I do that with the podcast too. Yep. LP.org slash join. And you can uh, contact you any too. of us via the form on, on the LP page down at the bottom, I guess is where it is. Um, you click on contact or something, and it'll, it'll, it'll let you send a message to us and we'll respond. Um, in some way, at some point. All right. <laughs> let's 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 do the quiz. I'm let's excited. Get I love trivia. Going here. Okay. I want I want a Bluetooth record player. Two days ago, uh, doing trivia through work. There you so go. It's going. We're going. So. So question one: The Federal Trade Commission and more than 40 states accused Facebook on Wednesday of buying up its rivals to illegally squash competition. What did prosecutors call for Facebook to do? Appoint a new uh, chief executive? What? I, I think it's break it up. Right? Yep. Break, break off Instagram and WhatsApp. Elect a new board of directors and pay billions of dollars in penalties. So Ken <laughs> said uh, uh, break off Instagram and WhatsApp. Laura, what's your I think that, I think that's right. That I don't know for sure, but I think that's what it is. Uh, I agree with Ken, so we'll, we'll go right there. And yes, that is right. Uh, and sorry, I'm, I'll try to keep myself calm. I, the trivia thing, when you do it for you know prizes, it's also who gets it the fastest. We don't so win I'm anything like skimming here. and just like bang, <laughs> just go bang. Well, I always so. make sure that the person who gets the answer right out of our uh, out of our viewers does get their message put up. So, uh, nice. Jared, congratulations, you Good did job, get that Jared. right first. Now, federal and state regulators of both parties said in separate lawsuits the Facebook purchases separately Instagram for $1 billion in 2012 and WhatsApp for $19 billion two years later eliminated competition that could have one day challenged the company's dominance. So I just want to point out that Instagram was a fool for not hanging on to uh, 
hanging on for another couple of years, apparently. They could have got $18 billion more dollars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, this raises a really interesting question. What is the, you know, what, I mean, I know what the answer is, but, you know, uh, what, what is the uh, libertarian view on companies buying each other or the potentials of monopoly and all of that stuff? I, I, I will tell you in this particular case, because anybody can create another social media site, and certainly people have. I mean, we've seen people go into Mimi, Parler, uh, some of these others. I don't think this really has a leg to stand on in my world. I mean, I hate Facebook. Make no mistake. I think they're the evil empire, and they're always spying on me. And really, I'm on there only because of the LP stuff, and I like to try to screw with their algorithm. But um, I don't, I, yeah, I get all kinds of weird ads. Um but other than that, you know, I, I mean, I anybody can start up a competitor. The only reason Facebook's a monopoly is because, in any way, is that people are still there. And, you know, when Facebook started cracking down on everything right before the election and kicking tons and tons of people off, I think the breakup has already begun. There are people who have already left. There are people who are already going. I think we're going to see uh, uh, factionalization. Parler is obviously a right-wing-leaning thing, I think. Yep. I'm not sure I'm not on there, but... Um, you know, and then there's also Twitter. Twitter's still out there. Um, I, I don't... This isn't like it's like, oh, there's one sewer company in the whole county, and, and now we've jacked the rates up tenfold. Or, um, you know, even in the government-protected monopoly space, right? The whole price of insulin thing. This is this is a different scenario where anybody can write a new platform, and th I think that uh, we're waiting for that next platform. I think we're waiting for that next generation... Um, you know, what's going to be better than Facebook? And I think there's plenty of opportunity for that. So the, so the big question out there is whether there's a way to um, improve our level of, of digital privacy um, to prevent, you know, I mean, Facebook as a, as, as a platform, you know, has its pluses and minuses for sure. But how do you protect your privacy, um, you know, those algorithms that you're talking about, Ken. So. I think the main thing there is, uh, and actually I saw a very good thing on this, you know, services like Google and Facebook and, and those that are free, they have to make money somehow, right? I mean, they have server farms, data centers full of servers, they have to pay for that somehow. And so to pay for that, they're selling your information, right? When, when the service is free, you're the product. And... I think the solution is going to be some sort of subscription-based service. How exactly that rolls out and will people accept paying? Um, I, I think the article that I saw said that we we our information is sold for twelve dollars a year or something like that. So I mean, twelve dollars isn't really that much money. And you know, if people would be willing to pay maybe fifteen bucks a year uh, for a service that is guaranteed to protect their privacy, um, that you know. You know that that could work. Um, I, I think that's the selling point. That's the door. Will people? Will it happen? I don't know. But next question. Next question. I was going to yeah. say we're going to run out of time. <laughs> yeah. So, which top cybersecurity firm revealed on Tuesday that hackers had stolen its digital tools, which could be used to mount new attacks around the world? I Ooh. did not hear about this. Amazingly, like this is my realm, and I didn't hear about it. Um, oh, cool. wow. So I know Fortinet as a company, but Fortinet is a security company. And I work with them a lot. Um, the others I haven't heard of. Um, so I so don't actually, only I, I, I will, I will say FireEye is also a security company. Okay. Uh, and they do a lot of government contracts. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> government contracts inherently infers silliness, but um, I don't know. I, I, I still I always go with my gut. That's something I learned a long time ago, so I go with Fortinet. It might be wrong, though. Hey, Jer Jared and Paul say it's CrowdStrike. Okay. Phone a friend. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll take the phone a friend. I mean, it, you know, uh, okay, the wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. No. Oh, it was, it was Eric. Eric had it. No, I didn't know it was them. I just knew that they were a cybersecurity company. Uh, but FireEye, uh, FireEye revealed on Tuesday that its own systems had been pierced by what it called a nation with top-tier offensive capabilities and that their hackers had used...
use novel techniques to make off with its cybersecurity tool. The FBI confirmed that the hack was the work of a state, but it would not say which one. Interesting. So interesting. That's I'll tell you, you guys know we've been in a cold war, like a digital cold war for a while now, right? Well, and, and that was what I was about to say, that you know, this is the next battleground. Yeah. You know, I mean, you look, I mean, the Soviet, the Soviet Union, I'm, I'm going old school here, but uh, Russia, <laughs> Russia has digitally attacked many of the former Soviet republics, economically, socially, communications wise, uh, and now they're going after bigger fish. I mean, there's, there's tension between Russia and China because there's been ongoing cyber attacks between the two countries that are spurred on by their national government. This is the 21st century battleground, and we're just not identifying it as a true war yet. Yeah, no, I, I think that's um, well, that's a much deeper conversation. We'll run out of time. But long story short, the, the Cold War, the digital Cold War has been going for a while. Yeah. Um, and I, I do worry um, that it's going to lead to an armed conflict at some point. I mean, I look at the, was it the Israelis that uh, spiked um, a, an Iranian reactor, right? Um, yep. uh, or not reactor, but uh, yeah. Uh, nuclear refinement. Yep. Yeah, it's central nuclear refinement. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that causes people to go to war. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's, uh, if there's one thing to take away, uh, everyone, need, from the individual all the way up through companies need to do a better job of securing their stuff. And making sure you have at least backup copies so you don't get trashed. That's I do a lot of ransomware recovery stuff these days. So. Yeah, it's okay. it's a scary it's a scary uh, possibility there. Uh, next question: uh, The U.S. House of Representatives overwhelmingly passed a seven hundred and forty-one billion dollar defense bill policy bill on Tuesday of last week. Uh, which of the following measures would the bill require? Prohibiting the transfer of surplus military equipment to local police departments. Cross your fingers. Um, providing unconscious uh, bias, uh, unconscious bias training during basic combat training. Stripping the names of Confederate figures from American military bases, or the full integration of women into the military. Whew. I'm gonna guess it's the third one, the Confederate figures, but I don't know. That's my guess. I know that was being talked about. Laura? I think it's the fourth one, but I don't know. The, the integration, the, the full integration. I don't think it requires that. So seeing that I live in North Carolina and we have Fort Bragg, who happens to be named after a, uh, after a Confederate figure, uh, I will agree 100% with, uh, with Ken because uh, it has been in our news non-stop. So yeah, that's... That democratically is, controlled house yeah. yeah and uh you know when you could do something useful like fully integrate women in the military or you can do something symbolic like take names off of bases it's congress they did the it's the symbolic every thing. time yeah because now also they're going to have to, uh there's a discussion on how are they going to rename them so they're actually talking about uh Campaign donation, basically, the methodology is going to basically be the, not not fundraising for the government, not you know advertising like Larry Sharp has talked about doing with the bridges in New York City. No, 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 no. no. Uh, donate to my campaign, and I will speak for you on the on the floor of Congress. So uh, we've reached that point. Good deal. Yeah, uh, we, we we have we have gone that low. And, oh, look, the graphic that they provide is Fort Bragg. So, yeah, that is uh, not a surprise at all because we have we have not stopped talking about this bill for the last week. Uh, yeah. it, obviously, we still talk about corona more, but uh, this this comes in a close second and third. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's already opening itself up for corruption, which is really, really, really disgusting. Okay, keep going. Uh, which musician sold his entire songwriting catalog to Universal Music in a landmark deal estimated at more than $300 million? 
I'm I'm gonna phone a friend on this one because uh, I I have no. Idea. I'm gonna guess right now. I'm stuck between Sir Elton John and Sir Paul McCartney, who are both sirs, as I recall. Uh, yes, they've both been knighted, I believe. Um, but Paul McCartney has the entire collection of the Beatles music. Oh, he has the Beatles too. Yeah, he I got it that. back. He got it when uh, he was willed it from um, Michael Jackson when Michael Jackson passed. Wow. So Paul McCartney got it back. So I'm thinking his song collection is probably worth a heck of a lot more than 300 million. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't believe it's Dylan. I mean, Dylan is a known name, but he's niche. You don't hear a lot from Dylan these days. Bruce Springsteen had a few hits. I don't think it's worth $300 million, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know. So we've got uh, Tyler telling us that it's Paul McCartney. And we've got John, John Jen telling us it's Bob Dylan. So those, those are our two phone phone friends here. I, I will tell you, my gut said Elton John from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you're going, you're striking off in your own direction. Uh, I, I, I'm just saying that's my gut. He's still uh, doing his, his, his tour. I've, I've got tickets to his tour. It's his grand finale thing in Lincoln on the oh, 22nd. We've got, in we've got a second one for Dylan. I think it's I think it's Bob Dylan. That feels like Bob Dylan. Yeah. Well, okay. you know what? We've got two phone friends that are that are telling us the phone. Wisdom of the young masses. Let's do it. Yep. And oh, our masses nice job. are all right. See, libertarians are some of the smartest people out there. Oh, I know that. Uh, oh, yeah. I know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> stating the obvious here, my friend. Okay. Uh, That's an easy know, quiz. Yeah. Uh, Universal Music purchased Dylan's entire songwriting catalog of more than 600 songs, in which might be the biggest acquisition of a single act's publishing rights. The price of the deal was not disclosed, but it's estimated at more than three hundred million. That's amazing. That's, a half, that's that's a half a million dollars a song. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, that's that's huge. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next question. Unless if you wanted to discuss that more. Nope, we're gonna run out of time if we keep. Yeah, going. that's true. Yes. Next question. Chuck Yeager, above the first pilot to break the sound barrier, died on Monday of last week. Seven. Which book made uh, General Yeager a cultural hero? I believe it's the right stuff. It was the right stuff. It is the right stuff. I don't Great have any book. books behind me, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's the right stuff. Great book, great movie, and actually Disney Plus is it's bringing a out uh, a new show that's going to be more true to the book than the movie was, because the movie decided to focus more on the astronaut aspect of the Right Stuff book. And <laughs> leave a lot of the Jaeger story behind, which is unfortunate, because this story is phenomenal. Uh, which mountain grew by about three feet on Tuesday when the new measurement for the peak was announced? Denali, K2, Mount Elbrus, or Mount Everest? I don't know, but I want to know how a mountain grows. I mean, do you feed it? Rocks? They remeasure. I mean, yeah. They remeasure. So there's actually a couple of ways. There's a couple of ways. Um, a, it's volcanic in nature, and additional well, yeah. pressure okay. has increased. Um, two, that would make sense. The, the measurement has always been incorrect anyway. Uh, or there has been some sort of structure placed on top of the mountain and that now changes the overall topography of the mountain because the structure very often is considered part of the mountain. This may be overthinking it, but in that scenario, number two, the mountain didn't really grow. It's just that people learned how to measure and count. So I don't, it didn't, the mountain didn't grow. So I'm going to say that one. I, I think volcanic is, I think that's, you're onto it there. So which of these is volcanic? That's the question. So the only one that's volcanic, but it's a dead volcano, is Elbrus. All the others are actually tectonic mountains. Well, you say it's dead volcano. This is 2020. So I'm going to go with that next time. <laughs> Uh, Laura? I'm going I'm going volcanic. It makes the most sense to me. 
I, I feel like it's Everest. I don't know why, but I feel like I saw something about Everest. Well, uh, John, uh, or John, uh, agrees with you. So, uh, and actually, I happen to know the answer to this because it's a multinational uh, attempt at remeasuring mountains, uh, particularly between China and Nepal. And uh, yeah, it is Everest. Um, and actually, Why? what? Why are well, they like, fighting over Nepal the tallest mountain? China have always had a very bad relationship, and Nepal has usually signed on with. Uh, India, and okay. the Chinese are basically trying to find something that they could work with Nepal on, that they could actually be friendly about, and start oh. trying to create uh, positive relationships between yeah, China okay. and Nepal. Uh, and that's actually, good. it seems to be working. Uh, actually, that's good. The plan is actually yeah. is working on this one. There is actually a, a, a sense of good feelings and good tidings right now between the Chinese and uh, uh, Napoli's uh, government. So, uh, uh, Somewhere there's a uh, joke in here about using a Chinese tape measure to measure it and not me, right? That's why. <laughs> I, I, I just hate word for free. I'll just throw that in there. But you, anyway. you are free to start that, that line of, of joke. But, you know, hey. No, actually, it's a really interesting story, and if we weren't running out of time, uh, I, it, it, it's a fun one. So, yeah. I encourage, if you're watching, research it, because it's actually quite, quite funny. Um, so, what did new research reveal about John Hopkins University's uh, eponymous founder? Uh, his death certificate was forged. He had four children from extramarital affairs. His household included slave people, enslaved people, or his wealth was greatly exaggerated. I've been really busy with work this week, so I haven't been keeping up. But I remember there was some news story that I saw, I think towards the beginning of the week, about extramarital affairs and genetic testing or something or other. So that's where I'm going. I don't know if this is that story, but... I think I saw something. Because can't remember this. This was like a week and a half ago. Uh huh. I think I think oh. I think I saw something about enslaved people in his household. And that would be a lot of egg on his face because John Hopkins was one of the leading abolitionists leading up to the Civil War. So uh, uh, I, so I will admit things, that I I don't know the answer. Uh, I, I missed this news story, so I'm, I'm in the same boat as Ken, but it, that would definitely be the scandal right there if, uh, if he had enslaved people. Jared, Jared, uh, Jared's it was, got it. Jared, Jared thinks that it was forged, a forged birth certificate, and it's it, it, it probably because it said that he died of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> So which one are we going to go with? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with enslaved people. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, it's all good. It's just, oh, no, it's I, really I, good. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a good one. <laughs> all right. Which one are you going with, Eric? I'm sorry. I was uh, I'm, I'm, because it, it would be uh, scandalous, I'm going to go with enslaved people. All right. So that's two for enslaved, right, Laura? You went that too, yep, right? Yep, yep. Yep. Do it. All right. Nice. Uh, Laura, nice, nice on the guessing, not nice that he had enslaved people in the house. Right. Yeah, no, 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 Laura got it right. Wow. 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 That, okay. it, yeah, that's, you know, the thing is, though, that's the whole lens of history thing, where, you know, Jefferson true. hated slavery but had slaves, right? Because you had to, because if you're going to keep up economically, you have to do what everybody else is doing, but you can still hate it, right? Yeah. It's the whole don't hate the player, hate the game thing. Anyway. Yeah, this is that's very true. Uh, for the first time in years, Australia will conduct a national count of which species: dingoes, kangaroos, koalas, or wombats. I'm gonna go dingoes just because of the whole dingoes ate my baby thing, but I have no idea. I'm thinking koalas because I've heard a lot of stories about koalas being really impacted with the wild brush fires that were going through Australia. Aren't they endangered already? They are. They're all endangered, yeah. Uh, 
Don't know. Yeah. First time in years. That that would make sense though. They would probably put on the endangered species list. They were counted, and then they haven't been counted since probably. So I I, I can go with koalas. Koalas. Yeah. And actually, Tyler, Tyler says koalas. Jared says dingbats. <laughs> I, I I think uh, uh, so. Yeah. Let's let's go koalas. And yep, yes, sweet. it is koalas. It, it just made sense. I, I didn't know the answer, but it, it, it made sense. Uh, the Australian government announced that it would commit $2 million Australian dollars or $1.5 million USD to count the country's koala population and record where the animals live. They will also use new methods such as heat-seeking drones, acoustic surveys, and detector dogs. Uh, Sorry, when I hear heat-seeking, it's like, oh, they're going to fire <laughs> heat-seeking right? missiles. So. Oh, and, and look at that. Uh, wow. The world, oh, world, uh, uh, estimated the overall 61,000 koalas have been killed, mm -hmm. injured, or displaced mm -hmm. during the summer's mm -hmm. wildfire. So, yeah, I, wow. I did remember that, that I, I've heard a lot about the koalas during their wildfire. So which musician became the first to reach number one on the Billboard 200 chart with an album that's entirely in Spanish? We have Bad Bunny, The Mavericks, Jennifer Lopez, and Rosil. I'm going to slaughter this. I do really apologize to any anybody who is a Hispanic uh, individual listening or, or a fluent Spanish speaker. Uh, Rosalia. I, I literally have no idea. I don't listen to new music, so I don't know. Um, I, if I had to guess, I'd go with Rosalia. Yeah, but that's just that'd a guess. Be my, that'd be my best guess, but I have no idea. We don't even have anybody commenting on this one. So we don't. I, I don't think so. Oh, well, Tyler says. Tyler says it. Yeah. Tyler says it. Uh, Tyler agrees, so uh, <laughs> I, I, let's go, Rosalia. Let's do it. Oh! Oh! oh bad Bunny. Who's that? Bad Never Bunny. Heard of him. I don't know who Bad Bunny is. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch when it comes to, to entertainment. My, my household has been infected by K-pop, so I, I don't have anything but K-pop playing elsewhere in the house, <coughs> other than my little brown. So I see a picture of an asteroid. So I've probably read this article too, just to let you know, because I'm a space junkie and and an addict. Uh, a robotic space probe landed on an asteroid collected samples, and ferried them to Earth, where they were recovered last Sunday from the Australian outback. Which country conducted the planetary mission? And I'm just going to say yes, I already did. Nice. I did not hear about this. That's really cool. China. Um, I don't know. China. Maybe? Let's see. China is most likely, in my mind, uh, second would be India, but China's the most likely. I know they've been working on a space program for a while. So Jared agrees and says that it's China. Uh, China was in space news. They successfully landed a probe on the dark side of the moon. Uh, That's right. And, uh, and they've been getting some awesome science out of it. Uh, but the Chinese space program is not advanced enough yet to get to an asteroid and free return. Um so uh, actually, uh, there's there's a couple of people saying uh, China, India, uh, Rock. You are watching. You say Japan, and I agree. It is Japan. Japan nice. has a very advanced space program. Um, actually, it is. It's not as advanced as the United States or or SpaceX. Well, actually, it's more advanced than SpaceX, but uh, ESA, Japan, or uh, JPA, uh, and uh, NASA are the three biggest space agencies in, in, in the world right now. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, Japan pulled off. This was actually their second attempt. Um, the first attempt brought back, like, six grains. Uh, and, uh, yep, Rock, Rock, talked about... Uh, China's returning a lunar sample, and they will. Uh, nice. But, uh, yeah, from, from an asteroid, Japan was the first people ever to get uh, material back from a asteroid. This was their second attempt. Much more successful. Uh, the United States actually just pulled this off as well. Uh, but it, uh, that asteroid material 
uh, won't arrive until late next year, and it's going to dwarf what Japan was able to pull off. The the U.S. Nice. Uh, mission was exceptionally uh, successful. Last question: uh, Which two shades did Panatone pick as the colors for the year of 2021? <laughs> Uh, I have no idea. I, I'm green, thinking something uh, either depressing or exceptionally cheery. Charlie Bravo. And because uh, ultimate gray and illuminating are both exceptionally depressing and cheery at the same time. <laughs> reading over the options, I'm sorry, I didn't read them out loud. Illuminating and classic blue, rose quartz and serenity. Serenity and Ultimate Grey, and Ultimate Grey and Illuminating. Uh, I, I'm going to say Ultimate Grey and Illuminating because that, that kind of wraps up what I said just jokingly before. So uh, uh, I could see that, or I could go with Illuminating and Classic Blue. But uh, I'm going to say. So actually, Rob Howard says yellow and gray. And that really will prove that the Libertarian Party will have uh-huh. it here in 2021 because it's yellow and gray. Yeah. Nice. nice. Let's, let's, let's see. It. Is it door number one? It is. Uh-huh. Woo. This is the That's all us. That, that it's all us for, for 2021, which I, I love to know. So, uh, yeah. Wow. I, I'm actually kind of stoked about that. Um, but it's 9.05. We've made it through the quiz a little late. <laughs> I'm a- okay. Lesson 17. I think this is Vivace. Is it? I don't remember. This might be Clefs. The last one. Okay, so we got that. This is just a lesson, so I don't have to stress. Echo Delta Charlie. That's Echo Delta Charlie. Bravo Alpha. Golf Foxtrot. That is Delta. Delta. That was Echo. Delta. Charlie. Bravo. Alpha. Okay. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo. Echo, Delta, Charlie. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, Golf. Echo, Delta, Charlie. Echo Delta Charlie Bravo Alpha. Echo Delta Charlie Bravo. Echo Delta. Echo Delta Charlie Bravo Alpha Golf. Echo Delta Charlie. Bravo, Alpha. Delta. Echo. Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, Golf. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, Golf, Foxtrot. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, Golf, Foxtrot. Echo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo. Okay, that's it for now.